Hi everyone, it's Tom with the LEC preview of the fifth week of the LEC Spring Split 2022. We are now past the halfway point of the regular split, so these are going to be the rematches for the very first time in this year between these teams. And we're obviously going to see now the standing shape up in what they're going to be for the playoffs. Some teams still have a very good chance of making it, others are virtually locked in basically. And some of them have been locked out but can still maybe cause a dent in other teams' playoffs run. So... Let's take a look at how the teams have been performing so far. Let's look at what I think about them uh, heading into this week. And then we'll look at the previews. But we start with Astralis at the very bottom. And then we will go up all the way until Rogue at the top. So Astralis. Um, I can be very brief about the, the this team. It's obviously very hopeless. They need to go 9-0 and basically in order to still make it to the LEC playoffs. Which is not going to happen. Uh, not with this team. They almost took down Vitality last week, but uh, yeah, they just lack that clutch factor uh, to to make those wins happen. Um, so it's hopeless for them. And to see a lot of frustration as well on social media about this team, uh, about their future. What I want to see uh, from Astralis now is actually because people are calling, hey, this player needs to be replaced, this player needs to be replaced. But I do think that for the remainder of this spring split, it's only four more weeks for them, uh, don't make any changes. Uh, I think for them, what's most important is just seeing, okay, which players are the most important for us to keep, which uh, show us promise and which should, uh, yeah, which can we build a team around for the summer split? I think that's for them the most important part right now because they don't have really an identity in the team that they can maybe already start building towards. So just look at, okay, which are the players that we want to keep that have that potential? And then in the summer split, in the off season between spring and summer, I should say rather, look at the other players that are available on the market and see how they would fit in building that identity for the team. Now, SK Gaming then, it's not much better. Only have two wins so far, um, which is okay, I guess, but it's not great still, obviously. So uh, for them, I think it's the same. Uh, don't make any changes at this point, uh, but wait until the off season and then start looking for uh, players that can fit into your team. But what I do think SK Gaming can do because they have picked up a few wins is start looking for an identity they want to play for um, in the summer split and see which players fit best in that context so uh, it's a bit better of a situation for sk gaming but yeah there's obviously very little hope for them in this spring split still um bds is slightly better still and i think um, what I've said a few times now already in these previews is that this team is a team that's looking for summer split to really um, show that they can compete in the playoffs. And that is kind of a, a long term investment, obviously, because most teams already want to show what they're worth in the spring split. Um, but BDS has been very clear from the start. This is a long term project. So stay with us. Um, that said, I think at the moment, Synchrof is the only sh real shining light in the team. He's very good in the jungle. Um, Adam, on the other hand, had a very rough last week. And I think overall, if I'm looking at his performances, it's looking rougher and rougher every week. So I'm not sure if that's a mental thing or if it's something else um, that, that gets into his head. But yeah, he's not performing very well. Um, I think BDS doesn't have an identity as a team either, not really showing how they want to play aside from being very proactive, but not really having a clear cut way of executing that progressive play. Um, but I do see progress in the way that they play together as a team. And that's a good point. Um, so yeah, BDS is probably not going to make playoffs at this pace. I think that's a bit of a disappointment for them. But I do think that if we're looking at long term, okay, it, there, there's something going there. They said it's going to be a long term project. So let's see what they're going to do for summer. Um, and let's hope for them that the team play increases over the course of each week. Excel, um, I did say last week in my week four preview, um, it's very important for them to pick up a week because they headed into the weekend. Uh, three and five, I believe. No, that's not correct. Um, three and four, I think. Yes, three and four and had a very, a very tough week, tough week ahead of them. 
Um, so it was looking unlikely that it would pick up a win, and that would mean they close out the weekend three and six, which is a terrible position to be in if you want to make the playoffs. But they did pull a red bit out of a head and won against Fnatic, which was very good. Um, Mickey X's play is obviously very defining at the Drake pit where he engaged with Leona and split Fnatic and Excel capitalized, won the team fight, and from there on just won the game. So that was very good. Four and five score at the moment. It's okay. It's not great, but it's in a good position uh, for them to make it to the playoffs. At least it's it's a better position than it would have been if they, they had uh, lost against Fnatic. A far better position because now, realistically, um, they need to win against BDS, SK and Astralis. Those are given that you need to win those if you want to compete. Then, they're, then, then they already have seven wins of the nine and nine minimum requirement. Eight and ten, something uh, sometimes also gets you in, uh, but it depends on tiebreakers uh, then sometimes. Um, so then they need to pick up uh, one more win at least, probably against Misfits is what they're looking for. Maybe Mad Lions as well, and then they are nine and nine. So it's not easy yet um no advertisement for the for the airplane uh, for the for the uh, air traffic company um but um it's okay you know there there is some hope there so let's see misfits is the Viteo show at the moment um he against vitality was the player keeping them in the game for as long as possible and obviously against uh, sk gaming completely dominated with yasuo um i think that for misfits what's most important in this second half is finding ways for the other players to carry as well and i think mersa and Shlatan are going to be very important because it support jungle duo needs to be able to um play to what the team is trying to do in the composition and you can't have viteo be the star every time it's it's gonna it's gonna collapse at some point there is going to be a team and that's going to figure out how to play against it. And then all the other teams will see, okay, so that's what we need to do against Misfits. And uh, they will do that as well. So Misfits need to be more adaptable in these final four weeks, in my opinion. Um, and let's see if... Um, I say a lot of let's see, but that's obviously what we're doing here. Is okay, we're, we're, we're setting up um, what they need to do. And then we'll have to see if they are able to do that. But that's what I want to see from Misfits. I want to see Shlatan and Mersa being able to, for example, make Neon a very hard carry or, or make Herit uh, put him in a position where he's going to carry a game because he is capable of doing that. We saw so last year, but um, it's going to be very important for uh, the, the whole team to be able to play towards that strength and not just rely on Viteo. But that said, Misfits is looking pretty solid, and I think they're in a very good position to make the playoffs, actually, given their development. Vitality had a very painful weekend last week. They obviously did get two wins, but um, especially the game against Astralis was extremely, extremely poorly played. Astralis should have won that game, and any other team in the LEC would have won that game from the position Astralis was in. I think they had like an 8k gold lead or something like this at some point. Um, Vitality saw a lot of individual play. Um, I did an interview with their head coach Mephisto, which is coming around at a time around the time of publishing this video. So uh, check that out on invenglobal.com or find me on my socials, Twitter is on the link below, where I'll also have posted it. Um, their head coach doesn't seem that there are any big issues, and he thinks that the team is doing very well. But I think that is uh, very honestly a lot of horseshit. Um, obviously, they didn't say that in the interview. I just asked him, "Is there anything that you think your team can do better?" Because he he, he was so convinced that uh, the team was was doing as well as they should. But um, my problem with Vitality is that it's not a team. It's, it's you know, there are player relations that are playing out well. Karsi and Labrov are a good duo together, right? I mean, not super solid, but they are a duo together and they can improve on that. Perks and, and self may seem to get along uh, pretty well and seem to be developing that. But across that you need a duo like Selmate and Larvov need to be a duo that support jungle duo is extremely important and that's not something I'm I'm seeing yet from Vitality so I'm not sure if there's something behind the scenes that I'm missing but I think the development of Vitality at this point in the LEC is not where it should be um they've said as well and Karsti is somebody who obviously starts playing better in the best of fives then that is where they're going to bounce back maybe but you need those foundations to be there then. And um, I, I'll be I'll be honest, I, I don't think in the past weeks Vitality has made the improvements that I would have liked to see. So um, we'll have to see. Uh, again, if I'm wrong and if uh, Mephisto is correct and we'll start seeing that synergy on stage. But at this point, 
Uh, Perks is their best player, and the, the the rest of the team sometimes steps up and sometimes is able to bring it together like a high high uh, elo solo queue game. But I'm I I still don't see the the team play uh, for the entire team yet, and and. I don't see the development there either. So that is a worry I have for them. Um, Mad Lions, it's not looking great so far. Um, I think the team is having the identity issue because I do think that they're playing more as a team than, than for example, Vitality. But it's just not good yet. They, they don't seem to know how to execute on what their team is trying to do. Um, and there are some individual mistakes as well. I think uh, Kaiser and Ayoya have not been able to step up to the performance where they were last year. Um, Reeker is not playing very well in the mid lane. Um, so it's more that on Mad Lions, I think the individual performances are low, but the team play is, is uh, slightly better, I guess, than for something like Vitality. Obviously, I've said before, and I'll say it again, Mad Lions is a team that I'm giving a lot of benefit of the doubt because in the past we've been proven wrong, even if the regular split wasn't good, that they were able to bounce back. But um, to illustrate my point a bit better, it's that in terms of individual play, a play like Reek was very hyped up in the uh, off season, um, and many people wanted to have him. And in his very first game, I believe, um, he played Yasuo. Uh, together with Oyoya's uh, Diana, and they had a very great game together. But what I'm missing from Reeker in the past weeks is I'm not really seeing that star potential that makes me think, okay, there is something there that could develop into the great mid laner. Now, he doesn't need to be Humanoid, who was a big shot caller and an important leading factor, but at least have that star power to carry. You see in Viteo last year, for example, um, on Misfits, his very first game, he he played Zoe perfectly, and you did see him as well uh, playing a champion like LeBlanc super well. In in the summer split, he div uh, diversified his champion pool more, and you saw that growth. And that's not something I'm seeing from um, Reeker yet, that individual power, because Reeker's uh, aforementioned Yasuo game was a lot of um, Elioya helping him set up that those situations right so that is something i'm not seeing of course everybody develops at their own pace and mad lions have proven time and time and again that they are able to develop the rookies very well so let yeah i, I i'm wondering if Rika is going to be able to get their this split i don't think so i think mad lions as a whole if i look at um kaiser and oyoya as well I don't think they're going to get there in time for the spring split playoff to be a true contender. But maybe in the summer split, once they have a, a split under the belt as a team, they are able to uh, to get there. So um, a lot of benefit of the doubt for them, but also some points where I think, okay, is this team going to live up to what we've seen before uh, from from Mad Lions? Because it's a big it's it's a big change in their new roster. Um, let me get to Fnatic. Uh, yeah, Fnatic have gone uh, one and three in the last four games. Now, obviously, they did play against Rogue, so that's excusable. I, if I've criticized anybody in the first half for losing against Rogue, um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll retract that because Rogue is just too good at the moment. Um, the game against G2, however, I did expect Fnatic to to uh, play better because those two seem to be contenders for maybe a, a final spot at the point. Or um, at least a top, you know, fighting for that top two for the second place in the LEC. And Fnatic was just not there. I think that game was more emblematic of um, Fnatic's problems than their game against Excel in a way. Because against Excel, sure, like, they didn't, Fnatic didn't play well together as a team. And I think that's a very big issue for them as well. Very similar to Vitality where it's individuals who need to step up. And you have some synergy. The bot lane synergy is there for Fnatic, for example. But uh, there, there is a lot missing. Um, and the loss against Excel hurt for Fnatic. I do think that um, their game against G2 to me was more more of a shock in a way 
in the way that they lost because it showed it just as a comparison it showed the growth that G2 has made in the split and the lack of growth that Fnatic had in in terms of the team play. You can see G2 is a clear line upwards where slowly and surely these team members are able to rely on each other more, are able to communicate better and are able to execute their fights better. And that is just something I don't see in Fnatic. So if I, I hope for them that they can fix it. Um, but it's it's not looking great so far. I'll be I'll be very honest um, for, for that as well. I have to be as critical of them as I've been with uh, with Vitality in that regard. Despite Fnatic having picked up one more uh, win than Vitality, I, I still think the same issues very much exist. Um, G2 uh, got rolled by Rogue. Um, it's, I'm not going to blame them, as I said before. Um, it, Rogue is just too good. But for me, what stands out on G2 is that Jankos is playing very well. I think Jankos is the glue of G2. I said that on, on, on uh, Twitter as well um, when I posted, okay, who would you have in your all-pro team? I think Jankos, to me, I'm leaning towards Jankos a bit more than towards Malrang because Malrang has this one defined play style that he's playing uh, well and it's working for Rogue, but I think Jankos has been more adaptable and has given more to his team um, and, and in their success as well. So he is the man to me. And on G2, I have a lot of... Good things. I'm seeing a lot of good things in the development. Uh, aside from getting stomped by Rogue, I'm not going to really blame them from them for that. I think Flakat and Targa wasn't developing very well. Broken Blade is very stable. As I said Young is very good. The only worry for me is Caps, who's very inconsistent. He did have a very, very good rise game against BDS, but in the match after, he was invisible again um, against Larsen. So I hope that, Lar that Caps is going to be able to step up and uh, be that hard carry that he was at some point maybe returning to the studio is going to help with that for him because he is obviously a, a studio player he's very good um when, when he's in a different environment and feels like he's actually competing rather than just screaming from home so uh yeah i i hope caps is going to step up there because if caps does and if g2 continues that that trend in the next week i think g2 can actually be a title contender uh, again with the, with this roster um if caps is able to be that shining star uh, as well um lastly rogue can keep it very short. They're just too good. Um, I did a, uh, an in-depth, long interview with Freddy. Um, I'll link it in the description of the video below. I will implore you to read it. It's very insightful about uh, the past four splits, which Rogue has been dominating in the regular split in the best of one stage. So I really break down with him. How do you analyze your players? Uh, what, how do you find their strengths? And how do they fit into the team? How do you crack the meta every split? And how do you keep getting good drafts? And also... Are you going to be able to win <laughs> in the best of five stages this time around? What hindered you last year and why should we believe that Rogue is able to key it, to turn it around? So watch, uh, I, I implore you to read it. It takes you six minutes of your time if you have the time. Um, and it, it will teach you a lot about what goes on behind the scenes at Rogue. Um, now, this patch, uh, this week is going to be played on a new patch, I believe, which is bound to change the meta a little bit. But not too much, so I don't think Rogue is going to suffer too much from it. Um, I'll see what they have to do uh, for now. I'm going to give Rogue a lot of benefit of the doubt. And yeah, they're, they're just too damn strong. An 18-0 split is statistically very unlikely. But if they keep this up, I really don't see any other team catching up to them, to be honest. All right, with that said, let's take a look at the schedule of week five. And let's do some predictions. So we kick off with Misfits versus BDS. Um, I think Misfits is a, is a better team at the moment than BDS. The only thing that maybe BDS can capitalize on is if they are able to shut down Veteo. I don't think they're going to be able to. Schlatan and Mersa have been performing better in the past weeks. So I do think that Misfits is going to win this. Um, maybe if Syncroft has a pop-off and is able to outjungle Schlatan in a, in a way that puts Misfits behind drastically, then something can maybe happen, but I do think Misfits is uh, is going to win that one. Astralis versus Rogue as the second game. Okay, as the second game. Uh, Rogue is going to win that. I Yeah, it's the 9-0 team Rogue versus the 0-9 Astralis. There's no way that uh, Astralis is going to win that. Uh, if I have to eat my words on that one, I will be the most surprised I've been about any esports result in recent times, I think, because this is this is too big of a cap. Um, Excel versus Vitality. It's probably actually going to be a closer one than people anticipate because Vitality, uh, as I said, isn't playing very well together as a team, but has a lot of individual star power. 
Excel has less star power, but is starting to play to better together as a team as well. Um, so I'm not sure how that's going to balance out, to be honest. I would still give the benefit of the doubt to Vitality. I think uh, they're not going to be very happy with their performance last week and will need to step it up and will need to give themselves the confidence as well that, okay, we are actually a good team. So I do think that they're going to step up their performance uh, against Excel. And um, yeah, let's just say Vitality is going to win that one, in my opinion. Fnatic against SK Gaming. Despite all the problems that I outlined earlier in the video that Fnatic has, I still think that they're going to win this. SK Gaming is not a very good team at the moment. Um, they have some moments where I think, hey, you know, there's something there that maybe they could get 8th or like 7th or like place with, but that's not, not much to go off, right? So Fnatic is, uh, unless Fnatic has completely collapsed, um, and this would be another straw um, on, on the camel's back. May, might be the one that breaks his, uh, but... Uh, yeah, Fnatic should absolutely win this one. There's no, uh, there's no argument against that, in my opinion. Um, Mad Lions against G2 is the final game of uh, Friday. Um, it's interesting to me because this game is going to be played on stage, same as the first one. Only the first and the fifth game will be played on stage in the in the coming weeks, at least. So it's going to be interesting to me to see how these teams are going to adapt to that. We know Mad Lions historically likes to play on stage. G2 as well with Caps and Yankos, whereas on Mad Lions you had uh, Armuth and Kaiser who like playing on stage, which is going to change them. So um, there are ways in which I can see uh, both of these teams suddenly playing a lot better. But for me, the big question mark is, okay, but how much of a factor is the stage for the players that haven't played on stage yet for uh, for these rosters. So, for example, with Targamas and Aflacket for G2 and on Mad Lions, Unforgiven and Reeker, how is it for them to, to play on a stage? So, overall, I do think the development of G2 has been better, so I expect, I'm expecting them to win, but I wouldn't be surprised if Mad Lions all of a sudden starts to get their shit together when they're on stage. And also, G2 is a very big um, opponent for them. There's kind of a rivalry between these teams. So uh, maybe that draws some extra fire from the players. Still, I do expect G2 uh, to win this one based on just their overall development. And uh, the stage factor, I think, is going to matter a lot for a player like Caps. Uh, so I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt there. And then on... Saturday, we have a BDS vs Excel as the very first game of the day. It's not going to be a very exciting match to watch, I think, because both of these teams have clear flaws in their play. Um, so it might be a bit more of a mud fight rather than um, a high stakes, high level uh, League of Legends match. Uh, for Excel, it's actually probably a high stakes match, actually, because if they want to contend for playoffs, they should absolutely win this game against BDS. So... Um, I am also expecting them to win based on what I've seen from them uh, last week. Um, it's looking a bit better. I do think BDS has a real shot at winning though. Um, if they are able to, um, for example, get their bot lane ahead. It's not looking great, if I'm very honest. Um, but they, they have a shot. SK Gaming versus Mad Lions. I'm expecting Mad Lions to win this. They have the better team play. Um, Rogue versus Misfits. I expect Rogue to win. I'm not going to bet against Rogue until they start losing games. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be very short, I think, until the final game. G2 versus Twilight. G2 is going to win that. And then we have Vitality versus Fnatic as the match of the week. Um, yeah, both of these teams have clear flaws, as I pointed out earlier. Both these teams are lacking team play. So this one is going to be really important for them to win and show, okay, what are their strategies against each other? How are they going to try to tackle um, each other's weaknesses? And which of these teams, when the when the moment matters most, um, is going to be able to pull their shit together and actually play like a team? We had this match, I think, in the very first week of the LEC, which is obviously, okay, no team is perfect in the first week. Um, every team is going to make mistakes. But this is really going to show, okay, where are these teams now? How have they developed since? And how are they, uh, what, what should we expect from them in the coming weeks? So this is going to be very important. If I look at the individual lanes, I think Alfari is going to play a better top lane than Wunder. If I look at the jungle, I think Cellmate is going to play a better jungle than uh, Razork. If I look at the mid lane, I think Perks is going to play a better mid lane than Humanoid. And if I look at the bot lane, I think Fnatic uh, has the edge there. So 
overall, um, I would have to give the lane advantage to Vitality. But as a team, I'm not so, and I'm not as confident as I am about the lane matchups, right? So uh, I, I think in the end, I will still predict. Yeah, I'm, I'm still predicting Vitality to win based on uh, how important um, the, the players are that are in um, those 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 carry positions um, on the top side of, of the map. Um, and I don't think that Fnatic's bot lane is going to be able to salvage that. But there is a very a real chance of Fnatic being able to play better as a team on the day and Vitality um, not having the the uh, coordination to, to combat uh, that um, force from Fnatic. Um, the, the one player you have to look at in this game is Perks. He is the one um, that will be the most important uh, for Vitality's win. And if he has a very bad day um, and, and, and Humanoid gets ahead or he gets shut down a lot uh, by Fnatic, then I think Fnatic's going to win. So Perks is the most important player in this matchup, in my opinion. So keep your eyes on him. And those were my predictions for this week. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Let me know what you think about the teams. And I'll see you all next week for my next preview. And I will also obviously, of course, upload a YouTube interview to my channel. So see you next week.